I am joined by a very good friend, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick. Great having you with us. Nice to see you again. And thank you for all those kind words. I think uh, it was the, the preface, I can never remember which, whether it's a preface or a forward that you wrote for me in the book. So uh, thank you very much. No, no, uh, my pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, and for those that don't know Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, he is author of three incredible books and two I recommend you buy immediately, especially if your doctor's told you to go on statins or you are already on statins. One's called A Statin Nation, uh, which is uh, Dr. Kendrick's latest book. Uh, the one before that was, uh, which made him really famous, uh, was The Great Cholesterol Con. My favorite of all his books though is Doctoring Data, which talks about how misleading a lot of those newspaper headlines can be and also explains sort of behind the scenes of how all that research is done and how a lot of it yeah. you have to take with a pinch of salt. It goes through a mangling machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it tells us how careful we have to be at you know, looking at all that oh, data. Exactly, yeah. Yes, I think that's um, one of my main things is trying to get people to understand the headlines, trying to understand the way that healthcare information is presented to us, which is normally horribly distorted. <laughs> Should we leave it as, <laughs> not go any further with the insults? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, what I will say is, I'm, I'm gonna just touch on cholesterol lightly in this hour, right now at the very beginning, um, but for a real understanding of all the things that lead to heart attacks and what you can do to, to, to um, sort of reduce your chances of having a heart attack, uh, we have earlier today uh, just done two podcasts that will be coming up very, very shortly. We have to uh, listen to those uh, online. Um, you'll be able to also, we also videoed them as well, so you'll be able to see sort of behind the scenes. Um, and they're coming up very, very shortly. They'll be on primalliving.com. But in, a, in as short as we can, most people believe, because that's what they were told, and I was recently told, you need to go on statins because your cholesterol level's high. Um, why? Where are they all getting it wrong with cholesterol? Why is cholesterol really not a big part of what causes heart attacks? Essentially, the, the, the information has been presented to us in a certain way. And, and a bit like ideas get built on even if they're wrong. And everything's been turned into this idea that cholesterol is bad for us. Interestingly, four years ago, the uh, American Nutrition Society's new guidelines said that cholesterol in the diet is no longer a nutrient of concern. In other words, we Thank can't you. find any of it. Yep. It does anything. Yep. As for cholesterol in the bloodstream, that's a slightly different thing. That's, and that's not cholesterol. Uh, I would almost like to say it's not in your bloodstream. It doesn't <laughs> exist. It's, it's, a, it's a thing called a lipoprotein. Yep. Um, research that I've done, research with other people, that we, we, we produced a paper last year, the, the most downloaded paper for, for, of, of the entire publisher, uh, showing that when people's cholesterol levels were higher, and this is in the, about the over 55s. Sorry, I can't give you an exact age because mm -hmm. everybody's study starts at a different age. Yep. Um, that, that if you had higher LDL, bad cholesterol levels, you lived longer than if they were lower. Uh, and, and these are the data. Yep. And yet, the other way, you hear it presented lower it, lower as terrible, lower, 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 lower. lower. Yeah. And, and you know, I've been looking at the whole area of heart disease for 30 years and as keeping it as simple as possible, the mechanisms proposed by which LDL cause heart disease, do not, have not, cannot make any sense. Yep. Once you understand the processes, you realize this is not, not a valid way of looking at heart disease. Yep. So, so, so I think if you watch yeah. the, the, the podcasts uh, or uh, uh, view them on our, our webcam versions of the podcast, uh, in depth or read Malcolm's books, you'll start to understand what Malcolm is saying is that we're all barking up the wrong tree. Definitely we all want to avoid, avoid having heart attacks, absolutely do. But cholesterol isn't the big baddie it's made out to be. And if you're new to understanding health, then let me tell you straight off that if we didn't have cholesterol, you know, our cholesterol system has been working absolutely perfectly fine for millions and millions of years. And if there was no cholesterol in our, in our, in our body, then all our cells would just be a bit of jelly and we'd be, be like the big blob. I mean, it's, it's crucial for life. So cholesterol seems to be the wrong tree. Let's quickly talk about then if it's not cholesterol that, that's causing the problem. Um, let's talk about some of the things we can do to uh, avoid heart attacks. Let's have a few minutes yeah. before we start talking about maybe some supplements. But well, I think as we talked, discussed earlier, it's, um, I'm looking at the, the artery, the, the lining of the artery, if you like, the bit that faces the bloodstream, is the critical part of the cardiovascular system with regard to causing 
or it's heart disease, really thickening of the arteries or damage mm -hmm. to the arteries. So what you've got to try and do is, is to protect this substance called the endothelium and lining that is a thing called the glycocalyx. calyx. Together, they're a kind of protective layer, a bit like the protective layer fish have when they swim mm -hmm. through the sea. That, that yep. protects them, allows them to slide through the water, yep. keeps nasty things out and keeps everything healthy. Damage that and things can get in, I yep. mean, uh, including in, in many cases like bacterial infections. That's one of the reasons the glycocalyx is there for fish. It stops mm -hmm. them getting fungal infections and mm -hmm. things. Protects. So we've got to protect that part of our artery and, and the ways to do this are things mainly, as, as we talked about earlier, the substance that's key for this is a thing called nitric oxide. Yep. That protects the glycocalyx, protects yep. the endothelium, stops blood clots forming, yep. drives the, the, the repair systems in, yep. the, in the body. And, and the sort of things that can improve that are the things that we already know, yep. which is like exercise, yes. Mm -hmm. Some of the interesting things are sunlight, which is that increases nitric oxide synthesis. Yeah, when, when you told me that earlier today, I was fascinated. I've been lecturing you for, for months and years in my book about get out in the sunshine because actually sunshine is so good for so many different things. And actually there are more people that sadly have cancer because they've not been out in the sun than those that have got cancer from the sun. The sun is this miracle thing that, that's there for a good reason. Uh, and, and, but only today did I learn that actually being out in the sun lowers your chances of having a heart attack because it helps the body synthesize. Well, we know it helps the body synthesize uh, uh, vitamin D, which is really a hormone, but we'll get to that a bit later. Uh, but it also helps the body create its own nitric oxide. It does, yeah. Amazing. And this is relatively new information. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually University of Harvard Edinburgh, that, that, that figured this one out. So that also lowers your blood Incredible. pressure. So if you go out in the sun, you can yep. lower your blood pressure by more than taking most blood pressure lowering tablets. Incredible. So, uh, so that's really important and, and you, you, you're looking after that. Some of the foodstuffs that will do these things that contain nitrates, beetroot apparently. For years yep. I thought, well beetroot, what a load of nonsense. <laughs> and then <laughs> realised that you know, parts of it are converted to nitric oxide which yep. lowers your blood pressure and protects your cardiovascular system. So that you know, those, those, those things are, are, are very good for you. Yeah. It, it, people that, that, that look at our website and, uh, and, and read uh, you know, other websites around health, and we're looking at food a lot, we're really keen on food at Primal. Um, what's the word, because you don't actually the word nitric oxide in foods, is it just anything that's a citrate that they should be looking for to get in the diet? Or? Uh, no, well, the, 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 no, it's well, obviously nitric is from nitrogen, which is yes. all around us, and yep. oxygen is also all around us. Uh, I mean, so you've heard of nitrous oxide, which is NO2, mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. which is actually very bad for you. Yeah. So this substance is, is you can't consume it because it's a, a reactive, super reactive free radical right, that's okay. produced in the body by itself. So for many years, people thought this substance can't possibly exist in the human body. Right. They, were, they, they did know the things that made your arteries relax and contract, yep. but they didn't know what it was. They used to call it endothelial relaxing factor, endothelial or something relaxing factor anyway. Yeah. And then it was discovered, someone said, well, we found out what this is, is nitric oxide. And everyone went, yeah, really? what? <laughs> it's a, no, this can't, this is a gas. Yeah. Uh, it can't be, a, and they found, they found it everywhere doing all sorts of things. It's absolutely key. It's just a really important yeah. molecule in your body. Yeah. You know, reduce it at your peril. You know, yep. things that would reduce it are, you know, as we've said, stress, smoking damages mm -hmm. it, uh, air pollution damages yep. it, um, uh, diabetes reduces the synthesis. So yep. all the things that we know that are yep. involved in heart disease, yep. you can usually find that they're doing something nasty yep. to nitric oxide. So, so, so let me make sure I've got this right. So nitric oxide, what it does inside the body, it relaxes the artery walls. Yes. And because they're relaxed, it allows blood to flow through uh, 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 less impeded and therefore reduces the chance of the stroke, the heart yes. attacks uh, and so, CVD. So one thing that we didn't discuss earlier was in fact, interestingly, if you reduce salt intake, like sodium intake, yep. um, in order to keep the blood pressure up and keep the sodium in, yep. um, the body, re the kidneys release a hormone called aldosterone. That then fires off a series of other hormones called angiotensin. Yep. And your tensinogen going yeah. to, and, and, and what this does is it contracts your arteries. Yeah. But also it has quite an important effect on damaging 
nitric oxide synthesis as well. Right. So what they call the renin angiotensin system, you may have heard I of it. No one renin. It's renin aldosterone. Yeah. And it's a way of your body keeping your blood pressure up. So if you've lost fluid or you lose blood yeah. or your kidneys are saying, the blood, you know, I've got to maintain balance here, mm -hmm. the system kicks in. It's actually quite damaging to the overall vascular system. Mm -hmm. So actually reducing salt intake can be quite damaging because it triggers this system that then actually causes heart disease. Mm -hmm. And and there is evidence that if you if you it's more dangerous to eat too little salt. Yes. Than this if there is any danger to eating more salt. Yep. So it's just yet another thing we're being told to do yeah, is well, restrict salt intake. And you're like, what? Just so your kidneys can fire up their emergency RAS system, damage your arterial system and cause yep. you to die. Mm. Try, try, let, let run that one past me again. You know. <laughs> I mean, the thing here, by the way, is that there's a great book called The Salt Fix. It exactly says exactly what Dr. Malcolm Kendrick has just said. In the, and The Salt Fix is, yes, too much salt, way too much salt will put your blood pressure up, but actually it also increases your heart. Uh, uh, if, if you have too little salt, you have a higher uh, heart rate, rate, rate yeah, and, and therefore that's even more dangerous than a higher blood pressure. So go and read a book called The Salt Fix and you'll realize that salt isn't the enemy that we think it was, and we think actually it was, it, it was demonized because if you have too much salt in your diet, you don't want so much sugar, and the sugar industry is about 30 times bigger than the salt industry, and we think that may be part of, part of, the, part of the problem, yeah. but also here is the key thing of all when it comes to salt. If you're eating properly, by the way, let's go the other way actually, if you're eating lots of packaged food and processed, 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 processed food, you may have too much salt in your diet. But when you're eating natural, wholesome foods, you've probably got not enough salt in your diet, so sprinkling it on top of your primal living and your primal <coughs> foods actually is gonna do you no harm at all. Now, I want to quickly bring you full circle then, so Dr. Mark Kerry has written some brilliant, brilliant books. The things that are most important to reduce your chance of a heart attack, forget cholesterol, right? It's eat things that help your body produce nitric oxide, or be out in the sun, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Try and reduce stress because the hormones that come with stress also can cause uh, uh, heart failure and heart attacks. So avoid stress, get out in the sun, get a really healthy diet, exercise, don't smoke, avoid pollution as much as you can. So those are all the most important things, the most important things. I'm not gonna say supplements are the most important things, but supplements can, can help. Uh, and uh, Malcolm wrote this book before we met, so it's not like, hey, here's his, his buddy Steve who sells some supplements. Let me just add a, 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 a few paragraphs on supplements. Uh, we hadn't even met <coughs> at this point. And uh, so Malcolm, one of the things you, you say in the book, you talk a little bit about omega-3. Yeah. Now, I always talk to people about omega-3 as being food for the brain. My mum's got Alzheimer's. I've always said, I wish you'd started taking <coughs> you know, omega-3 a yeah. lot, lot earlier. Um, so I know omega-3 is good for the brain, but you say here there seems to have uh, been beneficial effects on the conduction of electrical impulses, impulses in the heart. So, yes. so maybe omega-3 good for the heart? Well, there's several possibilities here. <coughs> it does seem to be beneficial. Um, one of the things is you've got to remember is that the conduction system of nerves in your body is incredibly important. Otherwise... Your heart stops and mm -hmm. uh, that's that. And, and yeah. there are conditions where that happens, but there's nothing to do with this. But the conduction system is also controlled. <coughs> Sorry. We're getting you a water bottle. <coughs> In fact, while we get oh, Malcolm yeah. a, a quick glass of water, we have been talking, by the way, you're watching this show. We've been talking and filming all day long. At the end of the day, when we're filming this, we have just done podcast after podcast after podcast uh, early today. So while, <coughs> while we're Sorry, getting uh, Malcolm a glass of water, okay. you know, the key thing is with all these things we talk about, all the supplements, we're talking about magnesium, whether we're talking about omega-3, whether we're talking about a good multivitamin, all the Bs and vitamin C, that they, 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 they all have multiple benefits. I've been talking to you about omega-3 for months and months and months, saying it's great for the brain, but isn't it fascinating now to realise but omega-3, which we get from a lot of fish, which we get from, from eating beef and, and so on and so forth, or from supplements, uh, isn't it great that it has you know, knock-on effects such as uh, looking after the heart? Yeah, I mean, uh, omega-3 has been kicking around for the heart for a long time, in part because the Eskimos, they know they're not, they're not called Eskimos anymore, they're called the Inuits. Inuits, yep. They're probably not called that anymore, I probably, <laughs> it's probably insulted all Inuits. Uh, 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 that, um, 
that they had very little heart disease mm -hmm. and one of the things that they noticed was they had a high omega-3 um, uh, intake and so people started looking at this quite what they thought it was doing it keeps apparently changing but one thing that happens is this, talking again about electrical conduction is very important and the electrical conduction is also incredibly tightly bound to how your your cells function mm -hmm. because an electrical impulse is that um, basically you've got sodium on one side of your cell and, and, and potassium on the other side and they're held to create an action potential and when you flip the gate over that sends a message all the way along the nerve flip 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 flip, flip at yep. amazing speed and how on earth any of this works <laughs> is beyond <laughs> the capability of human to to understand now, if your if your cell membrane is is it is not working that well or is not constructed that well, and some people would say if you if you put stanols into your cell membranes instead of cholesterol because yep. cholesterol is hugely important. Yep. Anyway, omega threes appear to improve the f conduction function of the neurons. Okay. So therefore, the electrical conduction system works better. Yeah. It's and oiling that system effectively. Well, 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 very good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oiling the nerve conduction system. And it appears to stop arrhythmias and can stop what they call fatal arrhythmias because the thing that normally kills you with a heart disease, or even in a heart attack, is not the damage to the muscle. Yep. It's that the electrical conduction system goes wrong. Yep. And that's what you'd have heard of with the ventricular fibrillation. That's why we, I was going to say, you, that's, and that's why, why you get things go badoom and all yep. that. Yep. It's to knock the conduction system back into kilter. Yep. And some people, you can just die of your heart conduction system going wrong. Yep. So omega 3s, it may not be anything to do with the buildup of plaques or atherosclerosis yep. or what we conventionally call as heart disease, yep. but it really helps the heart to remain healthy as a pumping organ. Yeah, and therefore that is one of the reasons. One of the other um, uh, one of the other effects is it appears to also um, because it becomes incorporated into the, the, the little blood clotting cells are called platelets. When you have omega threes within platelets, they actually don't clump together quite as actively, mm -hmm. so you actually reduce the blood clotting system, in, or you tone it down a wee yep. bit. And blood clotting is obviously very important for the whole yep. process of heart disease. So there's a couple of functions there. And That's there are some of the neuro I mean, neuro neurological functions are probably yeah. due to the conduction impact that it has in the brain. So the fish oils being incorporated into the membranes in your brain. Yep will improve the uh, the function of the nerve conduction and obviously that's how you think so yeah. it's going to be of benefit yeah. so i think it these are not like gigantic gigantic benefits yeah but they are real and they they are definitely worth worth looking at yeah. fantastic um now one of the things um you talk about here as well or well, in fact we just mentioned it already but i'll say it one more time uh, is vitamin d so let me just make sure, because we've had a fascinating day with you today, so let me make sure I've got this right, so I never get it wrong again. <coughs> Vitamin D, go out and get your sunshine, which helps the body convert the sun rays, the ultraviolet rays, into vitamin D, which, as, as you've written one of your books, um, I think it was one of your books, but it's actually it's more of a hormone than it is a vitamin, but well, let's not yeah, get too I, complicated I, yeah, I suppose one, you'd have to sort of... It's you, a whole debate new subject. <laughs> I mean, of course, the other thing of interest is, 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 is uh, where does vitamin D come from? Yep. And the answer is cholesterol. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> in this, okay, in this okay. book, I do yeah. a diagram, um, yeah. a chemical diagram. Here's vitamin, here's cholesterol, here's vitamin D. Yeah. Now, try and spot the difference, because they are so similar. Yeah. I think there's an extra double bond somewhere, and there's yeah. maybe an extra hydrogen. Yeah. But essentially, vitamin D, which is incredibly healthy and usually beneficial for you, yep. is created by the action of sunlight yep. on your skin. Yep. And, and that is why, in the summertime, yep. your cholesterol level tends to fall, and in the wintertime, it tends ah, to go up. Okay. And in the wintertime, your vitamin D goes down, and your... Um, and your cholesterol goes up and so all these people that go because the, uh, there are still many doctors that go cholesterol is important for the heart although we don't believe that but um, so it also even depend on what time of year you went and had your cholesterol yes it? yes it will be different it'll yeah. be different well, well it changes quite a lot and actually yeah. the cholesterol test is is a rather random thing in many cases yeah. you, you could go to two labs and get a 20 percent different figure on the same day and the same time That's if you want ridiculous. to it, it, yeah. it because it uh, in truth, what they're measuring is um, how they measure it. You, you, because when you start thinking about it, you think we've got these little tiny little yeah. little. If you think of a what's an LDL the size of a say an LDL is the size of a table a tennis ball. Yeah, a cell would be the size of your house. Yeah, right. Yeah, 
and you can't see cells because they're so small, and yet you're supposed to be going, oh, yes, there's 50,000 of these. Well, <laughs> how do you know that? You know, yeah. uh, actually, the measurement system is... The only way to actually measure your, what they call these lipoproteins yeah. is, is you, you put the blood sample into a centrifuge, you hypercentrifuge it, yeah. then because they're at different densities, they all start to separate out. Yeah. Then you look at what you've got left, then you can define how much LDL and HDL and yeah. all the other things you've got. I want to stop you there because we're, we're going off on. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We don't believe that cholesterol is a major contributing fact to heart disease. There yes. are many, many more things. But vitamin D is important. You've got to get out in the sunshine as much as you can. Don't get burnt because getting burnt, of course, can be dangerous. But as long as you're not getting burnt, you need the sun. And then certainly if you're not getting enough sunshine, and in one of your books, it might be this book, I can't remember which one you wrote it, but one of your books you put that in the winter most people probably need a vitamin D. I think supplement. they do, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, in fact, there was recently, there's been a study just come out last week, I think, okay. that, that said, yes, we need to take vitamin D supplements in the winter, in yeah. above a certain latitude. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is. Um, because otherwise we're going to be deficient. Yep. And um, well, my wife's very deficient in vitamin D, and we're on holiday all the time. She had that in a, in a recent blood test. So, uh, vitamin D, you need it. Get out in the sun. If you can't get out in the sun, make sure you're supplementing. Um, because of all the things we've talked about in the past, but now we we're linking it also to good heart health. Talking of another crucial vitamin, one that is uh, water soluble, so we have to get it every day. Talk to me about the importance of vitamin C. Yeah. Well, this is. Um this can be a complicated one. <laughs> uh, Go on, you've got five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, okay. uh, uh, vitamin C. There was an experiment done on guinea pigs okay. where they made them, the word is scrobutic, which means they take all the vitamin C out of them. Yep. Because vitamin C, almost all animals can manufacture it themselves, synthesize Apart it from themselves. Us. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a few others, fruit bats and yep. other animals you've never heard of. But yep. guinea pigs, for some reason, yep. are, are another one. Yeah. And uh, so it's quite easy to get their vitamin C down to, yeah. to zip. Yeah. At, at which point, these guinea pigs all developed atherosclerotic thickenings in their arteries, plaques, that look exactly like human atherosclerotic wow. plaques. Um, then if you pop the vitamin C back into them at high doses to yeah. get them back up, yeah. um, if you did it soon enough, all of the plaques, the atherosclerosis, disappeared. Isn't that and, amazing? Uh, and that research has been done, as far as I'm aware, once right. by one guy uh, and never further repeated. It's an experiment, actually, I'd quite fancy trying to put together on different animals. Uh, great apes do it, but of course, you can't do experiments like this on great apes. And it takes ages to get the vitamin C out yeah. of their bodies and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So you can do it on guinea pigs. So, the, so some people looked at that and thought, well, maybe vitamin C, why would that happen? Uh, what's happening? Well, the, the reason is that vitamin C um, keeps your arteries strengthened. It's stuff called collagen, which is a connective mm -hmm. tissue, which acts like little steel bars in the concrete. Yep. And if you, if the collagen starts to break down, your blood vessels start to break down. They start to break down. They start to break open, mm -hmm. which is what happens in scurvy, which is a lack yep. of vitamin C. The, the cause of death is bleeding to death. Yeah. Yep. So actually, what happens then is that the body, because we don't produce vitamin C, um, uh, for whatever reason, 40 million years ago, we lost the ability to yep. do this. Um, there's a substance that comes along and it's in your bloodstream and it's called LPA. You've never heard of it. People never heard of it. It's actually low density lipoprotein, bad cholesterol with an extra protein attached to the side of it. Yep. It's called LPA. Yep. LPA, when it sees a bit of damaged artery, sticks to it, sticks very closely and forms bonds with it, mm -hmm. with proteins called lysine or whatever, and it can't be got rid of it. So it's stuck yep. there and acts as a kind of plug. Okay. So it stops the bleeding. So if you've got a lot of LPA yeah. and you've got vitamin C down, uh, the level's down, yeah. and your arteries are cracking, it will keep you alive yeah. for longer. Yeah. So it's a kind of patch mm -hmm. that nature's come up with, if you like. And this yeah. stuff floats around in your bloodstream, and people with high LPA levels yeah. are much more likely to die of heart disease. Yeah. And what one, one chap did, a, a German researcher called Matthias Rath, is he sort of thought, well, maybe this is a cause of heart disease. Maybe if people are a bit lacking in vitamin C, well, they're not actually got scurvy, yep. but their blood vessels are cracking open a bit. Yep. This LPA is sticking to the sides of the arteries, yep. causing blockages and thickenings and clots to form here yep. that are very difficult to remove yep. because one of the trick LPA has got is this extra added protein mm -hmm. is identical to a substance called plasminogen and plasminogen is converted to plasmin, yep. and you may have heard of clot busters, tissue plasminogen activator, breaks the clots apart, yep. slices them apart, 
Well, if it's full of LPA, you can't slice the clot apart, so it's yeah. stuck there. And therefore, it's now stuck to the artery yeah. wall, and the belief of Ratha, myself, and Linus yeah. Pauling is these are the focuses for plaque formation. Right, okay. So if you've got, even if you don't think you've got a low vitamin C, yeah. he's saying, well, you do, and we need more vitamin C yeah. than people say that we do. Yeah. I think he did go a bit nuts. I think he was talking about 10 grams a day. Well, he, he, he was a good friend of Linus Powling, yeah. I remember. Yeah. And uh, Linus <coughs> Powling, who, has, who twice won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, and didn't no, he share won it. No, won it for chemistry first, then Peace Prize. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you for the correction there, but uh, still twice. Still twice. But I think it's important <laughs> he was a chemist. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, this was his yeah. world, chemistry, yeah. biochemistry. And he know? was so amazing. Uh, in fact, Einstein, when Einstein was asked, uh, was told he was a genius, Einstein turned around and said, no, I'm not the genius. The only genius on the world is Linus Powling. Anyway, he, there's books and books from him over here. Uh, he was massively big in vitamin C, and he talked about uh, probably the, the, the... His thing was the single biggest thing to stop a heart attack is vitamin C. But how did he know that way back in, what was this, the 1940s, 50s before? No, it wasn't that early, I don't think. Wasn't it? I don't think so, because I know that he worked with the work of Matthias Rath. Oh, OK. And he's kicking around with us still he's oh, okay. 70 or so, so maybe it was I think it was a bit, his later uh, life I think though, it maybe. must have been towards his later life okay. and in fact he was then dismissed as a raving loony yeah. by the medical establishment yeah bright guy won all these Nobel Prizes but yeah. you know what Pff, yeah. doesn't he know it's LDL yeah. so he fed people high doses of vitamin C now I think the, the, the theory is very elegant yeah. and, and if you've got a low vitamin C yes you take vitamin C even if you and, and the problem as you know with all the vitamin levels is they were all established in some cases, you know, 70, 80 years ago, yeah. in order to prevent scurvy. Yeah. And you can prevent scurvy at quite low levels of yeah. 80, vitamin C. 80 milligrams a day, they say. Yeah. 80, 80 milligrams nonsense. a day, but yeah. actually they weren't looking at the heart disease issues. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 you know, the vitamin B12 yeah. levels, for example, yeah. were established in 1947 hmm. on six people, oh. six people who had called pernicious anemia, which is yeah. they had vitamin B12 deficiency. So the level of vitamin B12 yeah. was set at some ridiculous yeah. level well, 70 years ago yeah. or 80 years, and no one's ever said, well, actually, maybe we should have another look at this. Yeah. And, and in fact, I have, it, have you? I have, yeah, to, oh, the, to the point that B12, in my multivitamin, I put five times the recommended yeah, amount, or at least, because the recommended yeah. amount is nonsense. Well, if, well, and yeah, in fact, yeah. that's, that's the same with nearly all vitamins. I, I say it's like the minimum wage. Yes. It, it's the min who wants to be on the minimum wage? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I've spoken to people about the vitamin B12 stuff. And, you know, farmers have got vats of vitamin B12 in their farms because they're, they're animals like sheep. Yeah. Quite often, there's a disease called Stills disease, mm -hmm. which basically means your animals stand still. Right. Okay. And they stand for still. Once, for once, something that makes sense. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> still disease because, because it, you know. uh, and and uh, they just go around and whack them with vitamin B12, and then the next day they're all running around again. Amazing. So they're always pushing up the vitamin B12, and yeah. and so they've got like, as it literally, you said you go to farms and quite a lot, they've got vats of it, like, yeah. sticking out big syringes yeah. and whacking it into, and, and with Stills disease, they just lose energy and they're completely yeah. but, and yeah. and in this country we say you know, if your levels above some ridiculously low level that no one really knows what this level yeah. means. Yeah. I mean, the level, I think it's 160 to 912 or something. Anything that wide, you think, yeah. Can't be right. that's just got to be wrong. Yeah. And in Japan, it's 600 to yeah. 2,000. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's a, you, you, you would be diagnosed as, as not having vitamin B12 in, in most people in, in the yeah. UK and in Japan, they'd be giving you vitamin B12. And in, in America, it's higher. It's just complete nonsense, isn't it? These things. So the vitamin Z thing is, what dose do you need? Mm -hmm. I don't think you need as much as Pauling said because you'd be drinking vitamin C for the for every hour of the day. But well, I have, you, to, be careful, I have to be careful what I say because the upper they, they, most vitamins, as many of you know, have a, what the government says an upper limit, which I also think is a complete stupid ceiling because no yeah. one's ever died of a vitamin overdose you can read all the, yeah there is something like 300,000 people a year die from over medication or wrong medication across Europe and America 300,000 a year from the wrong <coughs> medication no that's not it's it's the it's correctly prescribed medication you have to remember that this is okay. not incorrectly prescribed medication 300,000 people die from medicine that has been correctly prescribed how frightening is that and yet not a single death from over vitamins so there's no need for a ceiling on vitamins as far as i'm concerned but i have to tell you what the law says and it says two grams a day so i've got to tell you that I, the most i have is two grams a day 
but uh, I, uh, the most I have is two grams a day. I have loads of it. Anyway, leave that there. Yeah. Um, the point is, <laughs> how about this? A goat produces 15 grams a day. So in each one of our effervescent tablets is one gram. A goat pretty much produces that entire tub every day. And when a goat gets sick, let's say he has a cold or he gets the man flu or something like that, when a goat is sick, it's something like uh, it produces 100 grams of vitamin C a day. That's like five tubs of that <clears throat> a day. And yet we're told that, uh, uh, um, uh, that, that, that what we should have as our minimum is 80 milligrams. That is 0.8 of one of these tablets. I mean, it's just a complete nonsense. Well, I think, well, the other, there is under, other interesting work which they've done in both India and the US of people with sepsis. Mm -hmm. And sepsis is a big thing at the moment. Everyone's dying of sepsis. But anyway, yeah. it does exist. And it's, uh, sepsis is a condition whereby essentially uh, you get overgrowth of bacteria in your bloodstream. Yep. And the thing that kills you, actually, is because it damages your endothelium, the lining of your endothelium. Yep. That triggers blood clots. Yep. The blood clots are uh, cause, in some cases, cause rupture of the small vessels, yep. but also cause multi-organ failure. Yep. So sepsis kills you through multi-organ failure, yep. through damage to your blood vessel linings. Right. And they did a study in America which showed that if you give high doses of vitamin C, I think it was along with vitamin B6, I might be wrong on this, um, that you could reduce the mortality rate from 40% to 8%. What a difference. That's amazing. Right, That's and this amazing. is amazing. This is like, this is heap super serious medicine. Yeah. And you can't get anyone interested in this in the UK. No. no doctor will give you high dose vitamin C and sepsis. You will never get this treatment. You'll never get it because you can't patent a vitamin because a vitamin is a vitamin. And while you, if you can't patent it, big pharmaceutical companies are never going to endorse it. They'll always try and give you a man-made pill that's their patent, their formula. That's how they make their billions. They can't. Nobody can make billions out of vitamins because effectively one vitamin C from one person is no different to another. The only difference between my vitamin C, say, and the next guy's vitamin C that you see in Boots or Sainsbury's or wherever is I've just made sure that the other things that go in with the vitamin C aren't going to cause you a problem. So, I, for example, I don't put any starch in these, I don't put any sugar or any, or any su artificial sweeteners in because that's it, yeah. But other than that, a vitamin C is a vitamin, vitamin C, C yes. at the end of the so, day. So, I mean, I think the whole area here of, of what is, the, I don't know what the correct dose of vitamin C is. Yeah. Well, I don't if, think anybody does. If, if yeah. you have a blood test and you find you've got a high LPA, lipoprotein, it's spoken lipo LPA or lipoprotein A. Yep. And especially people from the Indian subcontinent tend to have higher genetically higher levels of LPA than yep. Caucasians, and they have a very high rate of heart disease. I would very strongly recommend whacking up the vitamin C yep. level for your dosage yep. for yourself. Yep. Obviously, not above two grams. Apparently, I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> You're not allowed to say yeah. bubble, bubble. <laughs> two, 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 not. Whatever you do, <laughs> <laughs> I start my day off with two of those, um, which is two grams, which time. is supposed to be the, the top. So if I then go and have some bell peppers, which have five times more vitamin C uh, than than uh, than in an orange, apparently mm -hmm. I'm not doing myself any good. But that just makes complete nonsense to me. Talk to me about the importance of magnesium. You say that uh, if you were to in your book, you say if you were to develop a, 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 a multivitamin, you'd always put some magnesium in. How does that? Magnesium affect the heart? Yes, well, in many ways, but this is a this is a a, a real major conduction system thing in many ways. But um, it's recently become emerged that a lot of people are suffering from magnesium deficiency. Agreed. Part of the problem is because magnesium is held and stored, and then goes into your bloodstream, you can be down to almost your boots, yeah. and your body will do what it can to hold the level up. Yeah. Um, and so you can be way down on your stores and everyone says you're fine. Yeah. So suddenly you'll hit a crisis point. Yeah. Now, there's a few medications that will knock your magnesium down. One of them is a thing called a, a proton pump inhibitor, which many people take. They'll be called things like Amaprazole, which is also called Losec, Pantoprazole, Prilosec, I think you can get this at the chemist. Yeah. And these knock your magnesium down. They also knock your vitamin B12 down as well yeah. um, and, um, and can knock your sodium level down. So they've got some quite nasty effects, but this can increase your risk of dying of heart disease. There is no doubt about this. Yep. And other things, health things to do with things that like, uh, like migraines as well are quite yep. significantly impacted by magnesium. Your body needs these 
ions. Mm-hmm. The magnesium it, it is just vital for the con- you, 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 within your heart. It all gets very complicated. Calcium goes in, calcium goes out. Yep. Sodium goes in, potassium goes out. Magnesium goes in and out and balances everything off. If you start interfering with the ratios of these things, you can be in serious trouble. And, yep. and in fact, uh, I spoke to you earlier, I said in Israel, the majority of their water comes from desalination plants, which has no minerals in it at all. Mm-hmm. And they, somebody pointed out, you know, if we let the magnesium levels drop in the population, we'll see an increase in the risk of death from heart attacks, not necessarily yep. atherosclerosis. Yep. And they did, and they're now putting it back in because they've had to. Yeah. So, you know, these things, nobody even pays heed to. In fact, uh, James Nicoletto is a bright guy. He's written all about this is an unexamined epidemic we have. We yeah. have to look at this more seriously. Yeah. We have to measure it yeah. and we have to treat it. Yeah. And I think it, it's becoming a real issue, I think, as, as, as we discussed, that actually the rate of heart disease going up in the under 75 and why is this one? In some cases, it seems to be these, these are the factors that are causing the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We're becoming hypomagnesemic, if that's a word, yeah. probably is. Uh, and we, you know, <laughs> yeah. should you go and get it measured? I think if you're a normal, healthy person, it's unlikely. But again, can it do you any harm? No, it cannot. Yeah. Well, I've um, got a book here, that, that, and I wrote it in my book, that there's, a, there's 300 different bodily functions that rely on the presence of magnesium. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly in America, more and more people seem to be magnesium deficient. Yeah. So I've been taking magnesium now for about three years. Yes. I, I mean, take magnesium every day. I take my vit- multivitamin every day. Yeah. I take omega-3 every day. Yeah. In fact, we'll talk about Let's come on to the next one I take every day because we haven't talked about this yet. And you've got it in your book here. Uh, CQ10. Coenzyme so CQ10. Yeah, so I, I take CQ10 because I'm over the age of 50. Yeah. And I start to take it because apparently all most of your cells rely on it as an energy source. And I start to think, and then in Japan, like 10% of the, the sort of aging population of Japan take a, a, C, a CQ10 supplement. Yeah. How, what's the relationship between uh, CQ10, coenzyme Q10, and heart disease, heart attacks? What's the relationship there? Well, the relationship is is complex in a way, but one of the things that statin drugs do is they deplete your coenzyme Q10 by about 50%. Mm-hmm. Coenzyme Q10, otherwise known as ubiquinone, because it's ubiquitous in all cells, is what they call a cofactor mm-hmm. for the production of ATP. Now, ATP is the is the battery in your human body. Yep. Adenosine triphosphate. Yep. That's Adenosine the triphosphate. That the mitochondria. ADP, yep. mitochondria, all the energy, if you like, everything you eat yep. when you respirate yep. ends up becoming, well, not quite exactly, but ATP is the end result. Yep. ATP goes to ADP, drives every energy system in your body. Yep. The final result of all these hugely complicated diagrams you yep. see about Krebs cycles and then ADH and. Yep. Things that I can't remember that all <laughs> just whoever worked all this out. It's yeah. amazing. If you reduce ATP, yeah. you've got less energy. Yeah. If you've got less energy, your heart is an energy heart intense yeah. organ. Yeah. And there are some people in the States that this is a very contentious area because some people say that the evidence and the epidemiology on heart failure, especially in the US, has just been hidden now yeah. because it's going up and going up. Well, why would it go up? You've got an energy intense organ in your body. Yeah. Coenzyme Q10 is vital for its function and all your muscles and everything else. Yeah. And if you don't have it, yeah. then your heart will start to fail. Well, of course it would. And so, you know, when statins first came along in 1980, whatever, six or seven, the first patent was from Merck and it was to have a statin with coenzyme Q10 added to it. Okay. Because they knew it knocked coenzyme Q10 production on the yeah. head. And they knew that in dogs, at least in animal experiments, this has caused problems. Yep. They decided not to launch it that way because they thought launching a drug with its antidote maybe made it look like the drug was maybe not as quite as super healthy and safe as they thought. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so they were worried about the reputation and the sales of their drug. Well, it, well, you may say that. I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> but, you know, why? So, so on that, I mean, I've got a very close friend, quite a famous <clears throat> friend, uh, who I won't say it is because he wouldn't like me to say, but uh, who takes a statin. 
Uh, I've got my uncle Pete who takes a statin, mm -hmm. and he won't listen to me. I don't think he should. I've told him to get off it, but he, his doctor's told him to take his statin. Should I be recommending to my friend and my uncle Pete um, that they should also take a coenzyme Q10 because they're on a statin? Or? I would say that anyone taking a statin must take coenzyme Q10. Okay. Um, That's good advice. Definitely. Good advice. So vitamin C, vit so let me recap. If you just joined us, we're talking about vitamins and minerals that reduce your chance of a heart attack or CVD. But if you just joined us, you missed the beginning of the show. Let me recap. Even before you think about supplements, there's, there's, there's five or six things you must do to reduce the likelihood of, of a heart attack. And I'm gonna, we'll just go through them again together quickly. Reduce stress. Yes. Number, probably the number one thing, um, and, and if you are just joining us, Dr. Mark and Kendrick, regarded by many as one of the leading experts. Uh, on, you've been specialising around the heart for about 30 years. It's more years than I'd more years, <laughs> like to <maybe> say. Even. <laughs> but I'm only uh, 32. <laughs> uh, then Dr. Mark and Kendrick has written three great books, two of them around cholesterol and heart and statin, one called Doctoring Data, about how we have to be careful with newspaper headlines and the way research is conducted. But a leading author, uh, top selling author with these, with these three great books and a GP, uh, still a GP in Cheshire. Cheshire, yeah. A lovely Cheshire, yeah. Cheshire, a lovely part yeah. of the world. Um, but, but before you get to taking supplements to prevent heart disease, I think the, the thing that in all the, we've done a lot of filming today together, I, I think the word stress, 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 try everything you can to reduce stress levels. Yeah. Now that means, might mean taking again some vitamins and minerals that help reduce stress, but anything you can do to reduce stress, do it, because this seems to be probably the number one cause uh, of heart disease. Uh, and then we went on to saying, get out in the sunshine, uh, and maybe just quickly a couple of minutes of, or a minute of why getting out in the sunshine of vitamin D can help. Well, uh, well vitamin D disease. does reduce the risk of all sorts of diseases. It's yeah. absolutely critical. I mean, you say, is it a hormone, is it a vitamin? I'm not entirely sure, well, does it matter? It's very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, says, ironically, it's synthesized from cholesterol in your, in your, in your skin under the action of sunlight. Yeah. But also along with the vitamin D, there's, um, there's, the, there's the nitric oxide, which is yeah. really important for your cardiovascular health, reduces the chances of blood clots forming, yeah. relaxes your arteries and reduces the blood pressure mm -hmm. and, and, in, and also increases the repair mechanisms that exist for your entire cardiovascular system. So. I put that up really high, and, yeah. and I think the nonsense of staying out the sun is just, just who came? I mean, it's almost like every single thing they tell you to do, do the opposite nowadays, yeah. isn't it? It's just, well, that's, isn't that yeah. true at home? Isn't that so true? And isn't that's the thing I keep getting repeatedly asked when I'm out and about in the streets. People go, it's almost like everything we were taught is completely the opposite. Yes. And in fact, I started off both my books by saying, you know, busting all those myths. And my poor mother, she's uh, 79, and it was about 30 years ago she was told by her doctor, or oh, because you've got these um, moles, you shouldn't go out in the sun. And of course, a doctor said it. That, that was it. I, no, no matter what I say to my mum now, she's 79, uh, she's got Alzheimer's, no matter what I say to her, it's why well, my doctor said I shouldn't go out in the sun. And, and, and yet we've seen evidence after evidence after evidence that, that, that yeah, it's so beautiful to be outdoor in nature and letting the sun rays on your body. I'm not talking about getting burnt, of course, you should never get burnt. But um, being outdoor in nature, getting sunshine is so important. It reduces, not increases, it reduces your chance of cancer. It reduces your chances of having a heart attack. So being out in sunshine, as long as you don't get burnt, out in sunshine, the two major causes of death in the UK can be reduced by being out in the sun. Well, I mean, I think to reinforce that point the, the total number of um, the total number of deaths from um, malignant melanoma in the UK on a yearly basis or so total number of cases is about 20,000 so it's actually quite a rare disease but I mean leaving aside I have read papers by in the Journal of Dermatology saying that sunshine reduces malignant melanoma risk and I believe that it does so um, in, in a medical journal some people are saying Yes. Even the, the cancer that relates, yes. that some people related to having too much sun. Reduces the risk it of does, it, yes. Totally it, the opposite. It, it does the opposite. Oh. Um, the two professions, or the two, well, maybe not professions, you might not call them that, the two groups of people in Britain who are the lowest risk of getting malignant melanoma are building workers <laughs> and farmers. And 
It's not just on that basis, but there is very strong evidence. I mean, people talk about sunbeds, but sunbeds are not the sunshine. No. It's, that's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't quote you chapter and verse, so I think I did mention it. In, this, in, in the, I'm not quite sure why I wrote about it in a stat and nation, but it, just looking at the data is that, that um, people who've had malignant melanomas, had them removed and then followed up, the ones who've showed the signs of the greatest amount of sun exposure are the ones who've got the lowest rate of re-emergence and secondary malignant melanoma. Phenomenal. So even in this area, it's like, well, even if you suggest it might increase it very slightly, which I don't believe that it does. I mean, there are skin cancers that are increased by sunlight. Yep. There's base rodent ulcers, basal cell cancers, which are definitely sunlight related, and, but they are not as serious and not nothing like a serious cancer. They can be removed entirely. Yep. Um, you know, the, 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 we even here we're looking at it and going, well, you know, to me the idea is the, the big shiny thing up there has been up there throughout all of human evolution. Mm -hmm. And the idea that it, it's bad for us, yeah. surely it's more bad for us to avoid it, which is what we've never done throughout however many yes. millions of years we've existed or all yes. animal creatures. Yes. We were now being told to put sun cream on cats' ears in case they get sunburned. It's like, you know, uh, <laughs> what? You know, uh, we, we, I just, it's funny, how is we, this we happened? Just, we just lost, we've lost the plot as human beings, haven't we, don't you think? Uh, well, we're told not to eat things that we've eaten throughout evolution yes. that have made us what yeah. we are today. You know, go back to the omega-3 and fish as a species. We started off by uh, living near the sea to start off with, which actually meant that we had a lot of salt intake, so therefore salt can't really be bad, otherwise we would never have survived yeah. as a species. Red meat, as long as it's natural red meat, the way our ancestors and primal ancestors used to eat, can't be bad for you. It's impossible, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. Maybe that processed red meat might be really well, bad I, for I us. Well, I think that's, this, this is another thing. I mean, when yeah. they look at studies on red meat, yeah. they, they also, it's like from America, where they put every hormone known to man into the red meat, fill it up with antibiotics, feed it absolute... Well, what a, hot, what a hot subject yeah. at the moment, Malcolm. You know, we, we, we are in danger of having more American foods <laughs> being sent over because this relationship we're about to oh, have. Oh, I mean, their, their food is awful. Yeah. I mean, not all of it, obviously. No, but I agree with it. But overall. But overall, it yeah. is dreadful. I mean, it's just, just, this is not the meat that we ate 110 years, yeah. whatever. Anyway, yeah. so, so we're, and, and also when they do these studies, they, they, they say red meat and processed meat and corn and every other type of processed yeah. thing. So they add everything together yeah. and they yeah. claim that was all red meat. I mean, it's just beyond nonsense. This type of study, I, I use the crumple throw bin technique for it because there is nothing else to do with it. Yeah, it is just ridiculous. Yeah, but anyway, so we've got a wee bit no, away no, from no, supplementation. No, 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 it's great. It's good because it's those two things: the the the, the, the scare, people scaring us about red meat, people scaring us about too much sunshine. And if we just step back and go, us humans are stupid. Think about it logically. The sun's always been there. Red meat's always been there, and that's how we evolved as a species. So it must be more bad for you and harmful to be away from the sun than out in the sun. Simple yes. as that. And also think about it another way. The closer you live to the equator and were born, you were born with darker skin to protect yourself from too much sun. It's self-regulating. The further you away you live from the equator, so you're up in a totally different latitude, the further away you get, like the, the Eskimos and the Inuits and so on, had a paler skin because they needed more sunshine and therefore it was, it was a self-filter. Yes, anyway, I, exactly. I go off on a tangent a little bit, so we know the vitamin is important for us. Um, talk me through a, is it, is it a mineral, is it a compound, L-arginine, because you, you, you reckon yeah. we should have lots of it. So t tell me about L-arginine and what it is. L-arginine, well, it's an amino acid okay. um, um, found in most meats. Most people probably have enough of it, if, um, and some people will lack it. The reason for L-arginine, and I think I've said L-citrulline in those, they, they work together. Because mm -hmm. we talked about the nitric oxide in your yep. in your arteries being incredibly important. Mm -hmm. well, L-arginine works with a thing called nitric oxide synthase, which is an enzyme to produce nitric oxide. Yeah. So, so let me so just stop you for one second so I fully understand this. Because we have this in uh, Muscle 5X pr yeah. uh, product. Um, it's an amino acid. It's, it's, the body can produce it, so it's not what they call an essential amino acid because the body can produce it. Well, you know, but you have to get it from your diet. You do have to get yeah, it from your yeah, diet. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it is an essential amino acid. Probably. I'm saying that. I'm just double checking my brain. Either way, yeah, yeah. it's an amino you need, acid well, that so we you, need. you need it. I mean, the reason it's called L is just L levo, which just yeah. means it's L. Anyway, almost all molecules in, in nature are left-handed. 
Right, not right-handed. Is that what the L stands for? Yes. I never knew that. Levodextral, yeah. Isn't it great? Learn some every yeah, well, no. well, almost all of our enzyme systems are... are, are cause if you try, your left hand and your right hand are, are identical, aren't they? No, are they? they're not. Because if I try to shake hands with you with my other hand, it, yeah, it doesn't it, work. It doesn't work, yeah. all right? So they're actually mirror images of each other. Okay. And molecules in your body are mirror images of each other. Okay. So one is levo, one is dextro. But yeah. most of what we... Almost every molecule in nature, for whatever reason, has become levo. Yeah. You'll find very few dextro molecules. In fact, if you if you eat dextro glucose, yeah. it tastes sweet but does nothing else because your body can't use it for anything. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And if it, if it stuck it in a cell, you wouldn't want that, which is the problem you have with trans fats because they're also artificial. So essentially, um, uh, every cell, so when you're trying to shake hands with it or link it in, so every enzyme system is designed to deal with it being L-shaped because you can't fit it in the other way around. So, so they don't work. Yep. So it's a way of blocking enzyme systems and right. things like that. So the L is almost unnecessary. Okay. But just to say that you need these things, yep. arginine, citrulline, yep. they, along with nitric oxide synthase, make nitric oxide. And if you have high levels of nitric oxide, your arterial system is healthy. You won't get blood clots because it's also anticoagulant, yep. which means it stops blood clots. And that's why you need the stuff. Do you need a lot of it? Again, it's one of these things, as you get older, yes. Yep. If yep. you're 20 years old and eat meat all the time, you'll, yep. you don't need it. You will not need it, all right? Mm -hmm. But it becomes a lack as you get a bit older. Yep. And if you've got a low, if you've already got heart disease and things, it cannot do any harm. It yep. can only do good. Yeah, and it's an amino acid. Amino acid, uh, as we know, is, is really, well, protein that we... All yeah, food that yeah. we eat is either protein, carbohydrates, or fat, or a co normally a combination of two of those three. Uh, uh, and when we talk about protein, what that breaks down in the body is into amino acids. And remember, uh, of, of, of protein, carbohydrates and fat, it's protein that you find in both meat and in vegetables. So it, it's just the building block of life. So we need to make sure we're getting the right proteins and the right amount of proteins. Uh, and our gene seems to be the one in particular that helps the body then synthesize and create its own uh, nitric uh, uh, oxide. And that's the thing that relaxes the blood vessels. And if you relax the blood vessels, what happens then, of course, is blood just flows. Uh, isn't it also related to getting it up? Um, Viagra or erectile dysfunction? Yeah. Well, yes. Um, well, you took, there are some people who use, uh, in fact, um, the, I mean, the L-arginine, the nitric oxide synthase, that is stimulated by Viagra. Okay. It's through a en different enzyme system in the penis. In fact, yep. Viagra was first developed as an angina drug. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't work terribly well, but the early stage volunteers didn't hand their tablets back. <laughs> <And> <laughs> they found a better use. <laughs> somebody it. said, why not? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not telling you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, but somebody worked it out. So from there, Ulrich, and then oh, there's a whole new system. Yeah. So actually, v Viagra is very healthy for the... Um, for, for the cardiovascular system. And weirdly, they say people with heart disease shouldn't take Viagra. It's like, no, people with heart disease should, should take, take Viagra. Yeah. And in fact, people who've had heart attacks who take Viagra are much less likely to get another heart attack. Viagra is also used for other purposes. It's used um, for, for pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure in your blood, mm -hmm. vessels in your lungs, which also prevents uh, altitude sickness, that aspect of altitude sickness, yeah. by lowering the tension in your blood pressure, which stops it, blood, the, fluid leaking out and yeah. the pulmonary. So it has many other uses. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think personally it's a fantastic drug. Obviously not that I've ever used it. No, of course not. Of course not. Yep, yep. Uh, I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean it is, you know, uh, to an extent, yeah. I, I, you know, I would say to people yeah. um, who've got problems, well, take a small dose of Viagra. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what dose it is. No one's ever done the real study. Yeah. But you know, this again, it, the drugs they use for what they call angina, yeah. which are narrowed arteries in your heart, yeah. they are all working in the same way. Yeah. You've heard of G GTN tablets or spray, mm -hmm. yep. glycerol trinitrate. What that does is it's converted in your arteries to nitric oxide and, yep. and dilates them. And the problem with it, it dilates blood vessels in your head and can cause migraines and headaches. Yep. But it can also cause, in fact, there is a, there is a thing called dynamite gel which you rub it onto the penis and right. causes it to become erect because it stimulates nitric oxide synthesis yeah. in the blood vessels in the penis. 
So that comes from dynamite being, yeah. I think we discussed before, yeah. dynamite manufacturing was when GTN yeah. was discovered. Yeah. So um, fascinating. It all interconnects, if you yeah. like. It's really is. I think it. I mean, I know I'm a geek, but I am fascinated by it. Yeah. Uh, and I just think, gosh, this is so clever. Isn't that clever? Well, the human body is yes, fascinating. You know, and, so complex and, 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 and you know, when you look at these things and say supplements, and everyone goes, yeah, supplements, oh, vitamins, as if somehow this is woo-woo medicine. It's this is fundamental biochemistry, chemistry, medicine. This yeah. is how it works. Yeah. Why do you think drugs work? Because they stimulate things in your body to do things. Well, it's not just drugs that do that things in food, amino acids, our body's designed to respond to these things naturally. Yeah. The drugs are just artificial versions of these things. Yeah, that's right. And drugs are artificial in many, many cases, or maybe in most cases, are artificial ways of doing what vitamins and minerals can do for us if we eat them properly in our diet or supplement with them. Remember the word vitamins comes from the word vital. It is vital for life. And I think what we've discovered in this hour is the most important thing you can do to avoid heart failure, heart attack, CVD, strokes, which are, are very much related to the same thing, deep vein uh, thrombosis, again, related to the same thing, is to do anything you can to look after your arteries. First thing, avoid stress, minimize stress, do anything you can to avoid stress. And I know there's gonna be times in life where, you know, uh, at the moment I've got my four-year-old not sleeping properly, well, he's not four yet, he's almost four, but he's not sleeping properly, he's been brilliant for three years and now he's a nightmare. So we're up a lot more at night, so we're a little bit stressed with that. And, but you've got to do everything you can to minimise your stress levels, whether that be you know, taking a walk, meditation, whether that be try and avoid the drugs if you can, try and find, a, again, a, a multivitamin or something that reduces stress. Anything you can, as natural as possible, to reduce stress. Obviously, don't smoke. Get some exercise. We don't mean you've got to go from zero to hero overnight, but just get out and walk a little bit more. Go out and, and walk in the sunshine in the, in the hills, yeah. stuff like that. This is just... And it prevents Alzheimer's as well. Yeah. Talk to me about how, I mean, let's stay on that one for a second. How, do, how does walking, you think, help in the prevention of Alzheimer's or being outside or? I think some of it's under, well, I think, I think there are connections here with the sunlight, the nitric yeah. oxide and the yeah. da but, um, and the vitamin D is important as yeah. well because vitamin D is critical for, for brain function as yeah. well. Quite exactly how I think people have not said that yeah. they know, but that doesn't stop it being known that it is yeah. absolutely maybe we our brains need the stimulation of looking at yeah. trees and leaves and, yeah. and if we lose that yeah. we lose that stimulation everyone says stimulate yeah. your brain yeah. but going out and looking at a rock yeah. you know, a little bug going across a yeah. rock and and these things you know are perhaps the real brain stimulants yeah. rather than doing a secuda whatever it is what are they call Soko little squares. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just Sudoku, yeah. Sudoku, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting mixed up. You know, yeah, I know our exactly brains are probably designed yeah. more yeah. to pick up and look at and yeah. analyze stuff outside because that's where we're used to being. Yeah, and the thing that's is, it's, it's it's never that simple as just one thing, is it? You know, yeah. I mentioned a moment ago, my mum's doctor told us so many years ago not to go out in the sun. She listened to the doctor, and now she's got Alzheimer's. Is that because she's been vitamin D deficient for 30 years? Yeah. Oh, Combined I, I, with not, I, eat, yes. not eating oily fish because she was not into yeah. oily fish. So, you know, so not enough omega-3, not enough vitamin D, not enough sunshine. Mm. So it, all these things probably combine together. Uh, I, I think that you, some things are so complex we may never really hit them. Yeah. But yes, the, we know these things are generally healthy. You know, the sunlight and vitamin D we knew about, now we know about nitric oxide. I'm sure we'll find if you started looking that sunlight has a hundred benefits, yeah. a yeah. thousand benefits, yeah. because it must do. I mean, they used to, before antibiotics came along, yeah. if you wanted to treat bacterial infections, yeah. you put people in the sun. Yeah. And, and if you wanted to treat TB, you put people in the sun. And solariums were used to treat yeah. all sorts of medical conditions. And we've lost that. It's like it's become the enemy. Yeah. And it just what's ridiculousness. You know? Well, it's ridiculous because, okay, again, you know, there's, there's no... The, the, people get in the sun, there's no money to be made if you're outdoor in the sun. If you tell someone to put suntan cream on, there's a massive industry behind yeah. it. So I'm very cynical about all these things. But I think all, the, we've, gone, we've become stupid human beings as a race since really marketing and media kicked in in the 1920s. Um, I, it's been lovely to talk to you as, as always. I think you're an incredible doctor. Thank I you. think mankind would be at a complete loss without people like you that are brave enough to stand up and say when things are wrong. Uh, if you go to our website, primalliving.com, 
uh, Statin Nation, which is Dr. Malcolm Kendrick's latest book, is an absolute eye-opener. But also on our website, you'll find uh, uh, the, the Great Cholesterol Con, Malcolm's first book. Uh, and also try and download or buy Doctrine Data. It's, it's, it's a great, great read. So if you're one of those people that worry about news headlines around health, then read Doctrine Data because it teaches you really you can't believe anything you'll read in a news uh, headline, or certainly you've got to ask questions about them. Uh, and uh, of course, go to see our podcast, which we recorded earlier this morning at primalliving.com. Dr. Mark Kedrick, thank you very Steve. much indeed. It was a pleasure. Cheers.